Greetings and welcome back, math people of YouTube. Today I have a rather strange looking integral. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log sine x dx. Now you may be asking, what exactly is it that makes this integral quite strange? I mean, I've solved integrals before that had x times or x to some power times log sine or log cosine. Well, the thing is, those integrals had limits from 0 to pi by 4 or pi by 2 or something like that. They had really nice limits in the context of trigonometric functions. But here I have something strange. It's the, uh, the upper limit here is 1, and that actually has some drastic consequences for the final result. The solution development is quite exotic, and the result is almost too good to believe. So now that the integral is sufficiently hyped up, how exactly do we begin with the solution development? Well, we have sine x over here, and the sine function has a really cool definition in the complex realm. So in complex analysis, we define sine x as e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2 times i, which is, of course, very cool. And if I were to factor out e to the negative ix from here, then I would get e to the 2ix minus 1 divided by 2i. Now, 1 over i is equal to negative i, so we might as well write this as i by 2 times e to the negative ix times 1 minus e to the negative 2ix. This here is sine x terribly. Sorry about that. Now to make use of this definition for the sine function, we have the target integral i equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the logarithm of all of this stuff, which is i times e to the negative ix times 1 minus e to the 2ix divided by 2, integration with respect to x. Now, using the properties of the logarithm, we can express this single log as a number of logarithms. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log i by 2 plus log e to the negative ix plus log 1 minus e to the 2ix. Okay, cool. And now, of course, multiplying the x and then using the linearity of the integration operator, we have a number of integrals. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log i by 2, which is, of course, a constant, so we take it outside the integration operator, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log e to the negative i times x, and we have the cancellation of the log and the exponential functions, and we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times log 1 minus e to the 2ix dx, which is the really cool one, which will single out as i sub 1, of course. So that means we have integrating x gives us x squared by 2, with the limits being 0 and 1 giving us 1 half. So that means we have 1 half of log i by 2 plus what do we have here? Well, log and the exponential function are inverse functions. And we're left with negative i times x, so that's the minus sign here, and the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx, which sorts out to x cubed by 3. And with these limits gives us 1 third, so we have i by 3 here, plus the integral i sub 1. Now the integral i sub 1 is super interesting. To solve it, we're going to make use of a series expansion for the logarithm function whereby we have log 1 minus z equal to the negative of the sum over the positive integers k of z to the k divided by k. Now, in our case, we have z equal to 2ix. And this implies that log 1 minus e to the 2ix equals the sum over k, the negative of the sum over k, that is, of e to the 2ikx divided by k, and making use of this series expansion, the target integral i sub 1 equals the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of x times the sum over k, terribly sorry about that, again, the sum over k of e to the 2i k x divided by k dx. Now the x term is of course independent of the index variable k, so we take it inside the summation operator, and we have the negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over k, 
of x times e to the 2i kx divided by k dx. We can now switch up the order of the summation and integration operators and get the negative of the sum over k of the integral from 0 to 1 of x times e to the 2i kx divided by k dx, where 1 over k is independent of the x variable, so we take it outside the integration operator and we have the sum over k of 1 by, terribly sorry about that, we have 1 by k times the integral from 0 to 1 of x times e to the 2i kx dx, and all this needs is some integration by parts. So of course we'll differentiate the x function here and integrate the exponential, giving us negative sum over k of 1 by k times x times e to the 2i kx divided by 2i k, with the limits being 0 and 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2i kx divided by 2i k again, dx. Now in the limit as x tends to 0, we get a 0, but for x tending to 1, we get something cool. We now have the sum over k of 1 by k times e to the 2i k divided by 2i k again, minus 1 by 2i k, and on integration, again we have e to the 2i k x divided by 2i k, with the limits being 0 and 1. So multiplying out the 1 over k gives us negative sum over k of, let's see, we have e to the 2i k divided by 2i k squared, minus so that's 4i k cubed, no wait, that's 4i squared k cubed e to the 2i k again. Okay, cool. Now using the linearity of the summation operator, we have, wait, 1 over 2i would be negative i by 2. So we're rid of a negative sign. We have i by 2 times the sum over k of e to the 2i k divided by k squared and the two negatives cancel out, but you have an i squared there, so it's still negative. And wait, I've made a mistake. I've forgotten something. Yes, in the limit as x tends to 0 here, we get something else. We get 1 over, you know, the thing. I'm just going to write this as 1 times e to the 2i k minus 1 terribly. Sorry about that. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, the negative signs cancelled out, but you still have a negative sign because of i squared, and that means we have a quarter of, what exactly? We have the sum over k of e to the 2i k divided by k cubed, plus sign now, and a quarter of the sum over k of 1 by k cubed. Now, the last term over here is, of course, Apery's constant, zeta 3. Now, what about the other, other two? Well, I'm going to write this as the sum over k of e to the 2i to the k divided by k squared minus a quarter of the sum over k of e to the 2i again to the k divided by k cubed plus a quarter of zeta 3. Now, what we have here is first the dilogarithm and then the trilogarithm in series form. First, we have i by 2 times the dilogarithm at z equal to 2i, then we have a quarter of the trilogarithm at z equal to 2i, and of course we have a quarter of Apery's constant. Now for the actual target integral i, we had a couple of these terms plus all of that stuff. So we have i here equal to 1 half of log i by 2 minus i by 3, plus i by 2 times the dilogarithm at e to the 2i, minus a quarter of the trilogarithm at e to the 2i, plus one quarter of zeta 3, that I would like to lead this whole mess. So I'm just going to write it here. So we're starting off with a quarter of zeta 3, which looks absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is... I've solved so many ridiculous integrals, but this result is just bonkers, and you may be wondering, wait, shouldn't we have gotten a real number as the solution? Well, you can confirm using Wolfram Alpha that all of this is indeed 
approximately 0 0.29 something. Yeah, it's actually, as per my notes, 0 0.29264. Wolfram Alpha confirms all of this. I mean, the right-hand side, as per Wolfram Alpha, has this equivalent form, which I have to believe. Yeah, I just have to. What kind of horrors took place in separating the real and imaginary parts? I do not want to think about that. So, in the spirit of math teachers all around the world, I will leave this as an exercise to you, the viewer. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you were surprised by the video, result especially. And I hope you learned something from the video as well. Be sure to like and subscribe, share the video too, like for the algorithm, comment just for the algorithm, say hi if you want, you know, for the algorithm and stuff like that. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the effort I'm putting into this channel, then do consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.